Hi guys, it is an unbelievably, spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top, gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise on Saturday, July 22nd, 2017. So, after two trips to the beach, two trips to the beach, my little dog is finally going to let me do my three days late and $300 short climate change meltdown roundup rant. I'm supposed to be coming to you on Wednesday, better late than never. And I've been working all day to try to finally get to this point. I'm going to let the little dog go enjoy the setting sun here in paradise on the foggy Mendocino County coast. And, uh, Good Lord, guys, I am thrilled to say that the mainstream media is just absolutely chock full of stories about the various ways this planet has been heading directly into a burning lake of fire while me and the little dog have been canoeing in the smoky Sierra Mountains. But we're going to start our romp around a burning planet not right here in California or British Columbia, as I could be. We're going to start on the top of the world, up there in the Arctic. Many versions uh, of this story about uh, the methane bomb. The methane bomb, unfortunately, my, my no shit Sherlock button seems to be finally just completely broken so we'll just have to do this without the no shit Sherlock button. Uh, let's start with this story. Thawing permafrost poses even greater global warming threat than previously thought. Can you hear the no shit Sherlock button? Here we go again. Week after week, month after month, year after year, we have the words more than previously thought or greater than previously thought. Just one more story that the worst case scenarios imagined Oops. By a climatologist a few years ago, worse than the worst case scenario. All right. Runaway global warming is without a doubt a nightmare scenario for humanity. Do you think so? Blah, blah, blah. One of the most feared of these feedback loops is the vast amount of organic material currently trapped in the permafrost which would release methane and other greenhouse gases in large amounts given the right conditions and now a team of researchers has discovered another significant source of emissions that would result from the thawing of the tundra. Yes. For the frozen ground acts as a cap on much more ancient gas deposits, preventing them today from escaping into the atmosphere. There you go. Uh, so this is from the Mackenzie Delta in Canada, um, where they did this study and found that these thawing permafrost seeps were responsible for 17% of total emissions from the land even though they were only found in about 1% of the area. Hmm. One of the researchers, Professor Torsten Sachs, said, quote, we were a bit surprised we saw these very strong emissions. It means a very tiny fraction of the area produces quite a big share of annual emissions. There you go. Okay, again, I, I could do a full rant on any one of these stories. 
So let's go over and now look at the Pingo evidence. The Pingo evidence, global warming is a threat to humanity. Hmm, according to the Pingos, Pingos may sound cute, but they are not cute, even though they start out as small, kinda cute mounds of Earth. Rather, Pingos are monsters from the depths. Whether Pingos are threatening is a stimulating question that scientists are still trying to figure out. Pingos are suddenly popping up in the darndest places. Yes, Pingos, these are these, these methane bombs. You know, these 7,000 zits. Pingos are one, are one more solid piece of evidence that global warming is a real threat to humanity. Yes, so how many times have I said it? Uh, you know, a few years ago there were about a dozen of these things. This year we're up to 7,000. Uh, and this is Vladimir Romanovsky from the University of Alaska. Quote, This is really a new thing to permafrost science. It has not been reported in the literature before. Hmm. Romanovsky estimates that there could be as many as 100,000 what he calls alternative pingos, meaning small little pingos, across the entire Arctic. Yes, uh, so there you go. We all wondering what the pingo, uh, let's listen to the, the referenced National Academy of Sciences article uh, upon conversion into plain English reads as follows. Methane looks set to blow at any minute is a powerful sounding statement. The ultimate risk factor is obliteration of global agriculture. Then people starve, get angry, and fight viciously, but first they migrate. Oh, anyway, what of pingos? Do they pose a threat to humanity? Maybe yes, maybe no. It's too early to know for certain. Hmm, okay, so we just heard from this guy Romanovsky you know, talking about the 100,000 alternative pingos, and we see Dr. Romanovsky appearing in Life Science Magazine, as Life Science Magazine is asking the question, will melting permafrost release the global methane bomb? Of course, this is the uh, big question. Uh, if you look to the northern, up north, we find an estimated 1,400 billion tons of carbon is believed to be resting, resting in the Arctic permafrost. This is equal to decades worth of today's human-generated greenhouse gas emissions, you know, getting ready to be released by today's and yesterday's and tomorrow's human-generated greenhouse uh, emissions. A swift, massive release of methane is one of the nightmare scenarios of climate change, a feedback loop that accelerates warming, bringing on consequences like rising sea levels and changes to farmland before people or other species can adapt. 
but don't panic. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's Scientists who have studied the soil of the far north say that while that methane bomb is possible, it is unlikely, at least for now. and take a wild guess who they research about this. How about our old friend Vladimir Romanovsky quote, the bomb, the methane bomb is maybe there, but it will not explode anytime soon. That's yes, and I love finding, you know, so that article right next to the opening article, thawing permafrost poses even greater global warming threat than previously thought. So here we go, these uh, climatologists saying go back to sleep, but come back next year where we can hear Dr. Romanofsky saying, damn. Anyway, what is going on uh, in our, in this year 2017? 2017 is so unexpectedly warm, it is freaking out climate scientists. There you go. Freaking out those climate scientists. Normally, the hottest years on record occur when the underlying human cause global warming trend gets a boost from an El Nino enhanced warming in the tropical Pacific. So, it's been a surprise to climate scientists that 2017 has been so remarkably warm because the last El Nino ended a year ago. There you go. The, so, NOAA reported that the first half of 2017 was the second warmest January to June on record uh, for Earth, topped only by 2016, which was boosted by one of the biggest El Ninos on record. This is uh, good old Michael Mann. What does he have to say about set 2017? Take it away, Michael. Quote, as if it wasn't shocking enough to see three consecutive record-breaking years in 2014, 2015, and 2016, for the first time on record, we're now seeing near-record temperatures even in the absence of the El Nino assist that the previous record year benefited from. And so, as they uh, they don't really point out that, uh, so now what's happening in 2017, a, a non-El Nino year is actually hotter than the, are you following me, the, the, the second hottest El Nino year. So we have an El Nino year being the hottest, a non-El Nino being the second hottest, and the last El Nino before 2016 being down the list. Are you following me why we are so fucked? Okay, again, any one of these could be a full rant. Let's look at all of these people, all of these people, Alex Jones, Lord Moncton, and a few others uh, claiming, uh, you know, clinging to their hopium of uh, mild climate change. Yes, right. Several versions of this. I'm just choosing the Guardian's coverage of this story. Hopes of mild climate change dashed, dashed by new research. Our planet could heat up far more than hoped, than hoped as new work New research shows temperature rises measured over 
recent decades do not fully reflect the global warming already in the pipeline. Hopes that the world's huge carbon emissions might not drive temperatures up to dangerous levels have been dashed by new research. The, this most recent research shows that temperature rises measured over recent decades do not fully reflect the global warming already in the pipeline, so the ultimate heating of the planet could be even worse than previously feared. How long has it been? Has it been 10 minutes since we've seen the worst case scenario getting worst case as more research comes in? And, uh, oh, yes, uh, so much for optimism. You can kiss optimism goodbye as the new research published in the journal Science Advances has ended, has ended optimism. There you go. Oh, Jesus. Uh, anyway, guys, as I say, I could get into any one of these stories for 30 minutes, but uh, let's move on from the Guardian to these uh, to these eco Nazis in International Business Times. Am I coming back? Oh, that's no, that's something else. Okay, what is International Business Times? How, what is their spin on this? Earth is getting warmer, and there is a reason to worry. Hmm. Climate change is real, and it is happening now. And uh, so they're looking at this new data. Uh, about the first half of 2017 being the second warmest in 138 years. Uh, you know, they talk about the, uh, this is kind of a repeat of the, uh, of the last one. Good God, uh, th this just goes on and on. Let's see. It goes without saying the effects of climate change are devastating, underlining the repercussions. A report titled A Region at Risk, the Human Dimensions of Climate Change in Asia and the Pacific recently revealed that Asia has approximately 130 million people uh, at risk of being displaced by the end of this century. 130 million climate refugees in Asia. Okay, wow, where have we heard this before? Rising seas could be detrimental to human health on a much shorter time scale, say researchers. Wow. So this is looking at how global warming uh, and sea level rise and all of this shit could foreshadow a rise in parasitic flatworms. Yes. Uh, now an international team from uh, University of Bologna in Florida has found that rising seas could be 
detrimental to human health on a much shorter time scale than previously thought. Hmm. Indeed, we've just never heard this. Okay. Hey, let's go over there from the coast to the middle of the Great Plains. Great Plains to see more dust storms in second half of the 20th century. Few existing climate models have captured the magnitude and variability of dust across America. Uh, climate change will bring more dust storms to the Great Plains, blah, 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 according to the latest prediction models. There you go. Um, okay, I think we, uh, we, we, we get it. Uh, la, da, da, from the Great Plains to Antarctica, finally, while I was out canoeing, it finally happened where this Delaware chunk size of Antarctica finally broke off and now new satellite images show massive Antarctic iceberg drifting out to sea. There you go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, from Delaware-sized icebergs to Al Gore. Al Gore, there is still time to solve the climate change crisis. Quote, I think that we're going to solve this crisis. Former Pr Vice President Al Gore said, mm, there you go. And I like this, uh, him, this is if I get around to a clueless moron roundup rant, if the quote, I think that we're going to solve this crisis is not enough to get him in a clueless moron uh, roundup rant. Uh, as you might recall, Gore met with President Trump to talk about climate change. And on Tuesday, he said he thought that Donald Trump had been open to the idea of taking on climate change. Quote, I actually thought there was a real chance he would come to his senses. D, D, D from Donald Trump. As long as we're talking about Donald Trump coming to his senses, Trump pick to be the Agriculture Department's top scientist is a global warming skeptic with no advanced science degree who helped Trump in Iowa. Trump has nominated Iowa political supporter Sam Clovis to be Under Secretary for Research, Education, and Economics at the Agriculture Department. Clovis has called himself, quote, an extremely, extremely skeptical of climate change research, saying scientific reports linking humans to climate change are not proven. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Okay, but what's going on with real climate change scientists? How about climate scientist says he was demoted for speaking out on climate change? It's a good thing he wasn't killed 
a former head policy advisor at the Interior Department is accusing the Trump administration of reassigning him to a lesser position for speaking out about the dangers of climate change. Uh, there you go. This is Joel Clement. Uh, wrote in the Washington Post, he believes he was retaliated against for actually being a scientist, acting like saying, we're fucked. Yes. Uh, anyway, guys, again, uh, any one of these stories. Here's a fun one from EcoWatch. A new interactive map highlights the effects of sea level rise. This is last week the Union of Concerned Scientists released a report showing how sea level rise could bring disruptive levels of flooding to nearly 670 communities in the U.S. by the end of the century. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm just, the part that they highlight, obviously, I mean, just looking at this map, you can kiss goodbye Miami, Florida. You can certainly kiss goodbye the Everglades ecosystem will just be gone in a few years. Uh, not looking good for around Charleston, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, not looking good. New Orleans, you can kiss it goodbye. Baton Rouge will be on the coast in a few years, as will Houston, Texas, uh, as Galveston, Texas, Padre Island, uh, Corpus Christi, all going underwater, so you can be shopping for beachfront property in Houston, Texas, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Orlando, Florida, a hell of a lot closer to the coast than it is now. But anyway, go over on EcoWatch and uh, play around with this map to see how fucked we are. What's going on over there in North Korea? Immediate interventions needed as North Korea faces its worst drought since 2001. The worst North Korean drought since 2001 has severely damaged staple crop production and could lead to serious food shortages, according to a new report from the from the UN. Um, there you go. I think this is a great way to trade, uh, that, that we should do a trade, that we will send uh, some rice and corn over there if they hand over that fucking little maggot. So maybe we can uh, hold our foreign aid to North Korea until uh, they hand over that little maggot to uh, Donald Trump. Many stories, I'm thrilled to say, on geoengineering showing up uh, here in the mainstream media. This is uh, Reuters News. A last resort at planet hacking plan could make Earth habitable for longer, but scientists warn it could have dramatic consequences. Do you think so? One way to prevent the Earth's temperature from rising into a city-drowning, hurricane-strengthening, heat stroke triggering danger zone is to immediately switch from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. At 
the moment, though, that transition seems unlikely. So, scientists and tech in innovators are also investigating various forms of geoengineering. Hmm, an approach that involves transforming the Earth's skies in ways that help cool the planet or just suck the carbon out of the atmosphere. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes, this, this, all these great ideas are extremely controversial. While some researchers, can you say Paul Beckwith, uh, believe such work could be a necessary part of our fight against climate change, Others argue that meddling with the planet exposes the world to a host of new risks. Do you think so? Plus, there is the growing fear that a rogue actor trying to achieve something good could attempt one of these globe-altering projects and spark a devastating international conflict such as a nuclear war. There you go. Uh, anyway, then of course they break this down and I'm sure Paul Beckwith would be cheering on the recreating a volcanic eruption. And if anybody does not know how they're going to recreate a volcanic eruption, I don't know if you can see that photo. It's called Kim Trails. Kim Trails. Anyway, let's see. What is on? Uh, who is this from? I don't know. Life Science. Cool the planet? Geoengineering is easier said than done. Planet Earth is feeling the heat. With the world facing increased warming, melting ice caps, rising sea levels, intense weather events, and other global disasters, scientists are exploring ways to re-engineer the planet to counter the effects of global warming. There you go. Uh, the schemes could contribute to a cooler climate, but they are not without risks. And of course, uh, as you know, how many times have I uh, have I been through this? And of course, these plans do absolutely nothing for ocean acidification, and and just as importantly, obviously, obviously, what it will do uh, if they if they act like they have this, it will give the fossil fuel addicts on the planet just reason to continue with business as usual saying who gives a shit? We'll just throw up some chemtrails in our anthropogenic volcano and we'll just suck that CO2 right out of the air and go right on about business as usual. And uh, who is this cheering on uh, Sucking it out of the air, this is some outfit called Tomorrow. Tomorrow, scientists either suck CO2 out of the atmosphere or face the consequences as it is already too late to simply reduce emissions. Okay. We need to start removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as soon as possible, 
Because if we don't, future generations will have to choose between <coughs> biblical weather events or spending trillions of dollars trying to avoid them. This is the latest grim prognosis, prognosis from an international team of researchers led by former NASA climate chief professor James Hansen. Speaking about his team's latest research, Hansen said the quote, shit is hitting the fan, close quote, in terms of current climate change progress. There you go. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. The shit is hitting the fan. There you go. The latest research shows it is extremely unlikely that pollution in the atmosphere will drop below uh, 400 parts per million any time in our lifetime. And according to Hansen and these other researchers, it is no longer enough to reduce emission levels. We now need to take steps to physically remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. There you go. But we're going to end anybody who acts like Hambo never shares any good news. You can go right here on the Yahoo News science pages to Investor's Business Daily commentary by some jackass named Kerry Jackson. I don't know if he's this DJ in, in Salt Lake City or just some other, whoever they found. Uh, and his story uh, does not really does not really uh, have a headline. He just gets into it about the global warming derangement syndrome. Yes, the global warming derangement syndrome is with us always and forever, it seems. And uh, then this is a huge Donald Trump supporter talking about how Donald Trump is getting such a, uh, a bad shake in the media. Um, just as Democrats and journalists have lost their minds over the Trump election and have vilified him as a sprite from Hades, they have gone around the glacier over climate change. It seems a day cannot go by with it out at least one mainstream media outlet reporting that Old Testament-esque disasters have already begun. Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. For years, we have been bombarded with claims that we had only so many months or years to do something about climate change, only to have those deadlines pass without incident. I guess he does not and doesn't consider things like Delaware-sized icebergs breaking off of Antarctica, the uh, Arctic ice at a record minimum, the hottest years in on record, uh, melting glaciers all over the planet. I guess these are not incidents. 
in the minds of these fucking uh, global warming deniers like this fucking jackass. Um, there you go. And of course, their main gripe that our capitalism driven advances are going to eventually cause famine, war, and economic and civilizational doom. There you go. Thank you, Carrie Jackson, for pointing out what I've been trying to point out for years uh, with my incessant screeching in my grading lectures that our capitalism-driven advancements, advancements are definitely going to eventually cause famine, war, economic, and mostly important, civilizational doom. The sooner, the better. But with that, I have got to uh, wrap up my three-day late climate change meltdown roundup rant here in paradise because it looks like a gorgeous sunset beginning and uh, I think I have an end times margarita chilling in the freezer. So uh, I'm off to have my... Uh, my margarita and uh, figure out what else what else I can find to enjoy. Here in the end times in Mendocino County, I will be back at you tomorrow with my doomsday sermon. Hmm, man. I got this uh, cannabis on one side of me and the uh, basil on the other. I think we need to uh, GMO basil and cannabis together. What do you think? I gotta go. Bye, guys.